If you're thinking about running the Doom Vault, one of the classic ICRPG adventures, then I want to share with you some of the things that I wish I would have known when I was first preparing to run this adventure. But specifically what I want to do is as we deep dive into each scene, I want to share with you how I would run it using the original version that was presented in ICRPG Core and is now available in the Adventure Packet, as well as how I might run each scene using the more expanded Mega Dungeon version of the Doom Vault, which is available over on the Runehammer site. And finally, what I want to do is I want to touch on how I might run each scene using the resources that are readily available because the Doom Vault is a game that I want to be able to get up and running and introduce my friends uh, to this great game um, and not have to overthink or overdo any of my prep, any of my kind of terrain work or anything. So using free resources or that are readily available in the ICRPG community um, is awesome. So before we dive into the very first scene, which is Hag Roost, let me just set the scene of how I would really introduce this adventure. And I'm going to use the uh, core version as the basis of the story um, because I feel it's a really good setup um, for either a one shot or kind of an introduction adventure for uh, adventurers. And essentially, the idea is that in Norberg, in the northwest corner of Alfheim, you have the three kings which are kind of the rulers um, that are at risk or at peril because the Ogdru ritual, the Ogdru are kind of this brotherhood of cultists that worship these eldritch gods, um, are there about to perform a ritual that will leave all three kings dead. Now, what you're setting them up to do is travel down to this uh, cave, this dungeon, and the adventurers are going to travel through it and eventually try to stop uh, this ritual. And so, again, this is a great kind of setup for a really basic dungeon crawl. You build out some fantasy characters. Uh, really easy, just, hey, there is a ritual. you got to get to the bottom of the dungeon, figure it out, um, and go from there. So there's some stakes. There's some really key elements there to just get the players moving. But what I really like is that it puts you in a position where you can just go straight into the dungeon, pretty much. And I'm going to use... This wonderful map. This is the updated version of, again, the original uh, map that was done for uh, for the Doom Vault um, and recently released on the Runehammer Patreon. Now we're gonna we're gonna be looking down here in the uh, bottom right, and so let me zoom in a little bit. We are down here in Hags. Roost. So let's start with how to run this scene using the original core version. Um, as it's presented, it says that this is a wind scoured or wind scored cavern mouth bathing in freezing spray, opening suddenly on a vertical stone. Uh, the rocks below are broken with shattered masts and anchored chains, a perilous entrance revealing the shifting corridor within extreme contrast to the outside. That's really the all the detail to it and that's again part of what makes some of these icrpg adventures a little intimidating is because the actual information is pretty bare bones and leaves a lot of room for the game master to fill in the blanks but what i have here is i have our group of adventurers and after we've done any introductory kind of rp or scene setting for the story um using um milo who is an npc that was uh introduced in the earlier uh moments of the game but you kind of trek them down this cliff and eventually they land here at the base of Hag's Roost, this little uh, ledge above the water. Now the very first thing is that this is uh, an opening and so we're going to be thinking about some threats, uh, some treats, some timers that are going to happen. And so what I like to do is, the very first thing is let's come up with a, uh, a timer. Well, um, we have this cliff here and the waves are crashing in and maybe a storm is brewing. And so what I end up doing is I pull out some craggly rock stones here and I will roll a D4. And we'll get something uh, along the lines of a one, for example. Um, and we'll just drop in and this is gonna be our timer. Every time the timer comes down, a, a large wave is gonna kinda of crash into the stones and perhaps pull a player down or make it a little bit harder to keep their feet, their footing. Uh, additionally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up with a treat and maybe along the way, 
I'm going to set out a skeleton uh, that has some loot that they could spend some time um, there so that there's a little bit of a treat that they could explore, maybe get some shabby uh, loot. And then finally, we're thinking of some kind of threat um, well, with a target of, say, 10, because there's really, it's only the environment, it's just a very, at the beginning, we don't have to go anything too extreme. Uh, a threat is, as they move across, they're going to be making some dex checks uh, to keep their footing. It's wet, it's slippery. If they fail, then they're going to fall to um, hanging by their hands. And what that means is that if our player here, every time they move, they have to make a dex check. If they fail, uh, they slip down to the edge and they're hanging by their hands and they either need to make a strength or a dex check to pull themselves up or they need another player to come by and do the same thing, make a strength or dex check. If they fail, if either one fails that initial one, they'll be hanging, they'll move from hanging by a hand to hanging by a finger and they'll drop down and essentially it's uh, like dying. So you'll roll a d4 and that's how many rounds they have until they slip and they fall. Um, but at that point, they need someone else to do it. They've lost the ability to recover themselves. And so that's hanging by a finger. And that comes from uh, the Temple of the Monkey God, which was done by G.D. Sterling. Great adventure. But anyways, so the threat is that as you're moving along, um, every scene, every time you're going to be moving in here, it's going to be make a dex check to um, resist or, uh, not, or to keep your footing. And then every time the timer hits, this big wave comes along and it's going to have to be like a strength check or a constitution check, whichever one uh, they want to try for to try to hold on and keep from getting washed away. And if they fail, it's again back to um, hanging by a hand. And if the timer happens again while they're hanging by a hand, then it's going to be like hard or it's going to pull them straight to uh, hanging by a finger and maybe drop down to a tying timer of one or two um, but really this opening scene especially using the information in core is that it's just meant to be a little bit perilous get them the feel for rolling give some uh, checks I'll give them some nice loot um, with the uh, with the the skeleton here and it's also tempting because you have this timer here that's with the waves. If they stop to explore, that's kind of burning and turn. Um, if they are wanting to dash, so this character sees what's happening, they want to dash and they want to move two squares or, you know, two movement, uh, move up to far, then make it a hard dex roll to see if they resist from falling um, down there. But this very opening scene you can move through pretty quickly if you're not careful and it's kind of you want to have a, a bit of a breathing space just to kind of get the dice rolling a little bit introduce some things um, be able to set the mood a little bit when it comes to the doom vault uh, the crashing waves the the rain is coming in some creepy music coming along maybe as they approach the uh the scene here they start seeing some runes and some creepy you know darkness happening as they as they step forward into the entrance of the next scene as well as you want to potentially have some peril some for some players getting them to pull each other back up is a really great way to do it but essentially that's how i would run it using the basic setup using the core version now let's reset the scene a little bit and let's look at what's available or what's detailed out in the Mega Dungeon version. Because the Mega Dungeon version has a little bit more details when it comes to each individual uh, scene or room when it, in the Doom Vault. And so we can use that to our advantage. So looking at that, it's uh, one thing of note is that it changed the name from Hag's, Hag Roost to Crow's Watch in the Mega Dungeon. So what it says here is the cliffs relent here, offering a precipice of flat ground eroded into the rock face. An ancient cavern opening is seen to the west, framed in weather-worn ruins. This area is littered with rain-wet skeletons and rusted gear, as if tossed or discarded from within the cavern mouth. Crashing waves are heard below. So this is, again, the most widely known entrance to the Doom Vault. Um, it's setting up the scene there. Um, as you get closer, 
you can see that it's the runes are there to be interpreted woe to those who dare the Ogdrum's realm none past those who can never die kind of setting up some uh foreshadowing for what's to come with the invincibles but we'll get to that later on in the long pattern but in the mega dungeon version we actually get some timers threats and treats already available and which we can use so for example uh, in the Mega Dungeon version, you get timers. Every D4 round, there's a hammer strike of thunder that lashes the, the, the cliffs. Uh, and so what happens is you roll a D4. And so let's roll uh, another one. And we have this storm that's brewing and coming in. And what we have is every D4 rounds, lightning is going to flash. And if any hero crit fails a dex roll in that case lightning hits them dropping them to zero points zero hit points instantly a crit fail so a nat one in this case so every d4 rounds the treats is again another body uh, so this is a great way to just kind of drop out somewhere in the middle of the scene um, some loot and then you can roll a d4 for a number of shabby items that they could pull in which could be really tempting i'll let players kind of grab use a grab an item spending their action but the threat the thing that makes this really different is that it changes it from just these crashing waves that might pull them off to actual monsters um, specifically a, a group of harpies a flock of three of them now there are no harpies in um in the adventure in the in the book those these are not a monster that are necessarily included um, with the uh, with any of the master edition or core so we're kind of left to establish what we want these monsters to be and I'll get those in just a second but uh, what we have here is this new scene where our players are moving along and they're trying to be stealthy they could roll some dex rolls um, they could be specific you know there we might have another timer that's keeping them busy but yeah just anything that's kind of drawing their attention may pull the harpies out and now they have to deal with the harpies on this rocky ledge um, again whether you're doing the first version or the second version the the trick is that this scene is could be gotten through very quickly a couple quick dashes done over with and that's not necessarily a problem but you want to be wary of perhaps when you're rolling the timer ha rolling those fours because all of a sudden you can roll a four and that's way too long uh, for players to be on hag's roost or crow's watch and and it will never come into play so i would probably recommend re-rolling or ignoring fours uh, if you were to roll that timer uh, as well as kind of having some mechanism in this case with the harpies that they are paying attention or watching or maybe after two pieces of loot are taken then they hear the bones crunching as they get kind of drop and out come the harpies now let's talk about the harpies for a second if you do choose to run uh, this style um, what i would probably end up doing is giving them just like a, a single heart of health so that they're not just like insta kills like one hps but and they're, they're a little tough uh and then what i would probably do is just give them like a plus like two to all their rolls so that's stats stats and effort stats and effort there and then for attacks what I'd probably do is keep it just really simple and do something along, along the lines of like a Talon Strike. So this is just a Talon Strike that deals weapon. And then what I'd also do is probably do some kind of swoop. So they swoop in and kind of grab you and this would be a strength contest. Uh, contest and if they if they if they succeed then you're kind of carried up carried up carried off in some way so this can be kind of a sticky situation if all of a sudden uh, a harpy swoops in they fail the strength check and now this character is getting 
dragged up high and if they kill the harpy then they fall and they might take some damage from the fall or perhaps if they take them out over the water uh, it can be perilous because if you kill the harpy uh, then you drop the character uh, if they were to drop I would probably have them grab hold of the the, the ledge and now the characters have to like save them with hanging by their hand or hanging by a finger um, on and on or eventually they have to find their way to getting into the cavern and now you know the harpies the harpies don't want to really go into the cavern into the cave itself so it's a it's a safe exit if they really need it um, but we want this opening introduction to kind of just really just get the blood flowing get the dice rolling um, have a just a linger just long enough to, to set the this, set this scene but not too long that this kind of drags out because the really interesting stuff is coming in in the full dungeon this is just the introduction um, really for things so between the two I really like the simplicity of just the white waves crashing I really like the way of just making some dex rolls uh, it's not a lot really combat oriented but it can really introduce some some friendly team dynamics as you save one another but if you have a bunch of characters who are like kind of itching at the bit they're maybe a little bit more decked out in their gear they're maybe uh, a little bit more prepared to deal with simple dex checks or um, you know rescuing one another introducing the harpies can be a great way to kind of test their metal uh, get them to use their abilities or their their new loot that they're super excited about uh, test things out get some dynamics there and so depending on where your players are coming from I would lean either more towards the simpler version for beginners and more advanced to include uh, with the harpies now let's uh, let's drop the harpies a little come back here and I want to show you how I would potentially build this scene if I was at the table uh, because this map is really good if it's on a VTT, you could slice and dice this however you want. Um, but if I was trying to build this at the table, I would try to use index cards as much as possible for, for this adventure. Because the index cards can really help you get the point across um, while still giving some space to move around. And as well as as you're introducing the dungeon, you can build these, these rooms as you go and kind of have that fog of war using the cards. And so our players are here, I've got their minis out on the table. What I'd probably end up doing is pulling from, I believe it's from the first volume, I would pull out just a series of these hallway uh, cards and just lay them out um, side by side. You, if you want a little bit of variety here, you can you know, do whatever you need. But this is essentially your ledge and players are all here at the beginning and what I would do is a near move a single move with an action could get them from one uh, one card to the next um, or somewhere within the same card is fine um, so I'd lay those out I would lay the the far side with these runic caves uh, to and signify this is kind of where you're going um, and then I would lay out as well that second you know another that skeleton which could draw them in and then I'd have my target card out I would have another card representing either the crashing waves have the timer sitting on top of that one so this is again symbolizing hey in this many rounds this effect is gonna come in the crashing waves the spiky rocks oh a wave is coming okay great that's a really easy way to signify it or if you're playing with the storm the lightning bolt okay in two rounds the storm is really going to come into play and you're going to get the, the thunder um, going in but it's a really easy opening scene that you can lay out with these cards um, and then you can have your players start moving around uh, as you're moving moving through you can see where they're at if they're playing with the harpies those can be some tokens or paper paper minis uh, you can cut and cut and dice those uh, there and so now we can have our little combat area we can have what's the edge what's not if somebody fell off the edge they're stepping you know kind of off the card a little bit and now players have to run in and say I've got I got you I'll save you and then pull you in the strength roll and they can you know, clasp 
clasp forearms as they thank each other, but then they've got to get back as a harpy swoops in, and you just get this really nice opening scene. And then it's going to really lead into eventually, whether they deal with the harpies or they get away from the waves, eventually they're going to enter into the, uh, the long pattern, the next scene. Uh, and it's going to be a moment of relief because they, they're out of the elements. They're out of the elements, they're away from the harpies, they're kind of into the darkness because the long pattern is a stark contrast from the other scenes, uh, from the outside to the inside. It gets this really creepy mood, you start to see the ruins, and you really start to see the influence of the Ogdru, this and this cult um, moving from Hag's Roost into the long pattern. But overall, this opening scene should really just be a place for you to really wet your whistle and get your uh, get your blood flowing for the adventure um, to begin. And I would really again recommend that you try to spend uh, a round or two, give them reasons to stick around, give them a reason to interact in this space because uh, if you actually look at you know the idea of fighting along a ledge, I think that's a really fun environment, terrain to have to contend with. Um, to overcome challenges there and if players just kind of rush past it you kind of miss out on a, a really fun opening moment um, to an adventure but what do you think how would how have you done it or how would you do it or anything that stands out i'd love to have your questions I'll, as we go through this deep dive series i will try to answer them as best as possible uh, because i really want to help uh kind of just explain and expound upon this doom vault um, adventure as best i can we'll be looking forward to the next scene um, which is the long pattern where we get to start talking about the invincibles but until then i've got some other content about the doom vault already um, that you can check out here or and then any of the links for this stuff is going to be in the description below uh, so that you can uh, check those out um, have those on hand and eventually as we go through this deep dive you should be prepared to run the doom vault all for yourself and when you do come back and tell me about it because i love hearing your stories uh, until then we'll head back to the kiln and keep working on our projects and we'll catch you in the next one